Good day. My name is Marika Becker and I'm assisting Serena. Um, I just want to find out, can you guys hear me? Can you put up your hands if you can hear me? Okay, Megan, Natasha, Zalmari. So, you, and am I correct in saying that you can't hear Serena? Okay, just give us a couple of minutes. Um, I'm quickly going to ask Serena just to restart her computer. So give us um, three to five minutes uh, for her just to get back online. Um, I'm going to be muting myself and just putting your hands down um, and then we'll take it from there. All right. So as I said, um, I'm the I'm a, a colleague of Serena, and I'm helping out with the webinar session. Um, she's experiencing that, some technical difficulties, so she's just quickly going to restart her computer, and she'll be joining us in a couple of minutes. Um, for you, I see there is a question of your of your in Afrikaans or English. So this is a two-talige session that will be held. So Serena will in both English and Afrikaans the the session for you for you anbied. Rach, um, ons stel wel die, die skakels van hierdie sessie, so uh, gedurende die sessie word hy um, opgeneem en ons plaas hierdie sessies plaas ons allemaal op ons YouTube kanaal, so it's um, Impact Education. Uh, so you can go onto YouTube, search for Impact Education and there you'll see all our webinar sessions um, that, that we've had so far. So we upload these sessions in a day or two. So if it's not there immediately, just give it another day and then you can go on again and you will be um, able to um, find these sessions. In the meantime, I can show you on your right hand um, panel box. The, the webinar panel box, you'll see there is a section with handouts, okay? So if you click on that handout section, you'll see there is um, this webinar presentation that she will be um, doing today. And then there's also additional work um, or documentation resources that you can download. So simply click on those files and then you can download them. Um, this is also very important for today um, so that you can work on these um, files after the session. So, um, Uratile, yes, my... Um, uh, my recorder is off, so you will not be able to see me, uh, but luckily you can hear me, so at least we know that is that is not a problem. Um, we're just waiting for Serena. As soon as she comes um, on, we'll um, put her uh, camera on, so you will be able to see her.
as, okay guys, so yeah, in the meantime, please go to the handout section, just go and download your documents there, uh, so that you are at least um, ready when Serena does come back. Hi, Serena. Hello. Sorry, guys. Apologies Hi. for the technical. Okay, Wonderful. Okay. So in the meantime, Serena, I have um, indicated to them where the handouts would be. Um, so most of them would have already um, downloaded their, um, their handouts in the handout section. Okay, perfect. Good afternoon, Grade 11s. Um, so as you um, probably have seen, we are going to discuss the um, cultural uniqueness and uh, diversity in South Africa. Um, there's quite a, a lot of information that we have to go through and it's also going to be a dual session. So please bear with me in this session. Uh, once again, apologies for the technical difficulties that we experienced this afternoon, but let's get right to it. Okay, so um, hopefully you're not struggling to hear me anymore, but if you do, please make sure that your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. You will automatically be muted when joining, joining this session. Um, should you have any questions, please feel free to, to put it for us in the question box. Um, this is, as I said, it's going to be quite a, a long session because there's a lot of information that we need to go through. So please, if we don't get to your question, uh, we will definitely answer it um, afterwards. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, and then uh, throughout the session, I will just ask you if you're still with me, if you can then just press on the raise your hand icon so that we can just make sure that you are, everybody is still following. Then as uh, Marika already said, um, there is additional resources that you can download, this um, uh, PowerPoint especially, um, that you can download from the handout box. Uh, you can also find any um, other information in the question box on the below or on the right. Uh, remember to ask questions, please. Um, then attendees, we, you are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in attendee being dismissed from the session. If we did not get to your question, please send us an email to academics um, at impact.co.za. Uh, questions in the question box will be answered and made available afterwards. If you did not receive these questions and answers, please send it to us uh, or please send an email for us at info at impact.co.za. Then um, afterwards or after this session, you can also go to our um, YouTube channel and all the recordings, not only for this subject, uh, but for all the other subjects will be um, on the YouTube channel and here you can see the YouTube uh, channel link. So um, as I said, I am Serena Yordan and I am the educational specialist um, for the services subject and social sciences and then more specifically for tourism. Okay, so just quickly an overview. Um, so for week three and four, we focused on the, our, culture, our culture and heritage. So we have concentrated on our culture and our erfenis. And then we look specifically um, in South Africa. So we look specifically at South African culture and we look then ook at the um, specific uniqueness that this for our land brings. So we look at the specific uniqueness that it brings to our country and how we can use this uniqueness to not only to promote our country, our country, but also to attract international tourists to our country. Okay. So on set for week three and four, we have looked at the culture and erfenis, and then we will now specifically concentrate on South Africa, the cultural uniqueness. Great. The focus point, the focus points that we're going to look at today is the cultural uniqueness and diversity, and um, specifically in South Africa, and how we can promote international and local tourism um, because of this cultural uniqueness and diversity um, that we find in South, Af in South Africa. So the focus point we are going to look at is the cultural uniqueness and diversity in South Africa, and how we can use this cultural uniqueness and diversity in 
om toerisme van internationale en plaaslike toerisme nog meer te bevorder en het op die ouwe van die dag tot ons voordeel te gebruik om meer toeriste um, nie net plaaslik te laat reis nie, maar ook internationaal. Ok, so there are a few major cultural groups in South Africa. We're going to look, um, look at these cultural groups. So the first group that uh, we're going to look at is the Ningi group, um, then the Sutu group, then the Shangan Tonga group. We're also um, going to look at the Venda people, the Khoisan and Nama group, and then also white Indian and, and the culture, um, colored cultural groups that we're going to have a look at. So, um, so net vir die Afrikaanse leerders, daar is een paar um, unieke kulture in Zuid-Afrika en ons gaan naar een paar kulture kyk um, wat in Zuid-Afrika specifiek voorkom, uh, die, wat insluit die Nungi groep, die Sutu groep, die Shangan Tsonga groep, die Benda mense, die Khoisan en Nama groep, daar gaan ons ook naar die wit, indier en um, kleerling groepering kyk wat in ons land voorkom. Okay, so the first group that we're going to have a look at is the Nungi group. Okay, the Nungi group consists of the Zulus, the Kozas, the Swatis, and the Ndebeles. Okay, so the first group um, of the Nungi group is the Zulus. Um, this is a group that stands out against other groups. So the Zulu group staan nogals uit teen oor um, die ander groeperinge. They are mainly found in Guazulu Natal. So hulle kom hoofdzakelijk in die Guazulu Natal provincie voor. Their houses is also quite unique. Um, it looks like a beehive grass hut and it's made of mud and cow dung polished, uh, polished floors. So the Zulus het, het uh, nog hulle een unieke manier hoe hulle hulle huise um, bou. So dit lyk amper soos een baiekorf um, met gras, uh, met, met een gras hut en het word dan van modder en um, queen mis um, maak hulle dan polished, uh, weet gepoleerde vloere vir, vir hulle um, hitte. The women are traditionally responsible for cooking for the household. So die vrouwens is dan ook traditioneel, hulle um, maak seker dat die huishouding koos het en dat hulle, um, weet, weet hulle sorg dan ook vir hulle huishoudings. And then the Zulu cuisine um, consists of meat and vegetable stews with vegetable side dishes such as um, spinach, pumpkin, pumpkin and cooked maize flour, um, and then also porridge that is made from fermented uh, maize flour, tripe and chicken. You will see that there is con constantly um, words that um, in italic, and that is then um, the cultural word for um, for example, if we look at in Pune, uh, I hope I'm, present, I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, which is then uh, the word for spinach in their cultural group. So you'll see all the italic words is, um, is explained in brackets afterwards. Good. So the Zulu um, weet hulle uh, cuisine, of dit wat hulle dan graag eet, is dan um, vlees en dan groente bredies, um, so met groente um, saidisse, um, soos um, spinazie wat hulle eet, pampoen, um, gekookte mielimeel, en dan eet hulle ook pap met, um, van wat gemaakt is, van gefermenteerde mielimeel, dan eet hulle ook afval en hoener. So dan sal jylle sien al hierdie woorde wat in italic of um, kursief um, gedruk is. Dit is die woord wat um, hierdie spesifieke kultuur dan gebruik vir die woord in hakies. So al die woorde wat in kursief is, verduideliking word na die tijd um, vir jylle uit, uitgespel of uitgeskryf. Ok, then the men. The men are responsible for the well-being of the families, providing, providing for them and keeping them safe. So die mans is hoofdzakelijk verantwoordelik vir die welstand van die familie, hulle sorg vir hulle en hou hulle veilig. The young boys are responsible for looking after the cattle and goats. So die, die, jong, die jong manne, hulle kyk gewoonlik na al die skape en beeste van die, um, van die groep. They believe in power of ancestors, they believe in divine healers, um, and they believe that they have the power to speak to ancestors on behalf of the people who are ill. So, hulle glo in um, die mag van hulle voorvorders, hulle glo dat hierdie, um, weet jy, hierdie um, healers dan die, um, die kracht het om met die voorvorders te praat, um, weet, vir, vir, of namens die mense waaran siek is. 
Um, so once again, the nine year in cursive is what they call their traditional herbal healers. And they have knowledge about herbal medicine and drinks to cure the sick. So here is traditional um, kraaie, um, Weet, die, die kraaie uh, dokters het dan, um, hulle dan kennis oor kraaie medicijne en wat om te drink, as, of dit, dit wat om vir, vir die mense te gee wat aan siek is. En dan is een beeste, is vir hulle baie belangrik in hulle leefstijl. Um, dit, dit wees reikdom en het woord ook gebruik as lebola. Lebola is gewoonlik as een voornemende bruidegom, een uh, bruidvolfraam te trouw, dan bring hy sekere... Um, afhangende van wat die uh, bruidse paal gesê het, die hoeveelheid um, skape of beeste dan na, na, die, um, na die mens of na die paal toe en hy um, gee dan sy dochter in ruil of hy sê dan dat sy dochter met die bruidegom kan trouw. So, cattle are very important in the lifestyle of the Zulus. Um, it shows wealth and it's also used as labola. So, labola is when a, a prospective a groom wants to marry um, his bride, he must bring the cattle to, um, to the father of the bride and he will then decide whether or not to um, then give his daughter away to, these, to this prospective um, groom. Okay, so beadwork is also very, very important. Um, this, uh, this shows um, messages which is woven, uh, woven into these the beadwork. It shows uh, messages of love, sadness and even warning. So hulle krale werk is ook vir hulle baie belangrik. Hulle weis of hulle kan boodskappe dier hierdie krale weis. Um, dit kan boodskap wees van liefde, hartseer of selfs waarschuwing. So just a few pictures um, of how the Zulu uh, group present or how the Zulu group um, looks like. So as you can see, a very, very distinctive stands out against the other group. This is a, a, a picture of their homes. This is a picture of their common meal that they will eat. And as you can see, a uh, quite beautiful craft work that they also uh, make use of. Oh, beat work rather, that they make use of. Okay, um, the next group of the Nungi group is the Kozas. So the Kozas are mainly found in the Eastern Cape. So hulle kom, die Kozas kom hoof saaklik voor in die Oostkaal. Um, the Kozas in the Zulus language are mutually understandable. So die Kozas in die Zulus um, kan mekaar redelijk um, oor en weer verstaan. The Kozas also consist of different groups, which is Pondu, Mufengu, Sele, Rabe, Rarabe and Tembu. So the Kozas um, het ook verskillende groeperinge or, uh, wat in hulle groep, wat die Pondu, Mufengu, Selu, Rarabe en Tembu is. Their homesteads are called um, uh, Umuzi. Uh, it, it's uh, in groups to accommodate large families. It's also round hats uh, with uh, huts with thatched roofs. So um, the Kozas are blij dan ook in um, dit is ronde hutte en dit is om groot families te accommodeer um, weet, maak hulle, hulle, um, hulle hutte en dit is dan ook een um, grasdak. So the men provide for the families also um, to keep them safe and away from harm and then the young boys are responsible for looking after the cattle and the goats. So, uh, so die mans is verantwoordelik ook vir hulle families en om hulle um, veilig te hou en um, weg van gevaar te hou. En die jongseens is hier ook um, verantwoordelik om na die skape en die beeste te kyk. Goed, die vrouwens, uh, or the women, or they are traditional uh, responsible for the cooking of the household. Uh, the cause of cuisine consists of red meat of cattle, stews, and their staple food is also the maize flour and beans that is stamped, and sour milk are drunk uh, by men and women. So the vrouwens ook in die koza kultuur is ook verantwoordelik vir die kook van hulle huishoudings en hulle um, etes of maaltuie uh, bestaan dan ook uit rooi vlees van, um, van, van beeste, uh, bredies, hulle stapel voed, voedsel is ook uh, millimeel en boone wat gestamp is en dan drink hulle ook suurmelk, um, die mans en die vrouwens drink dan ook suurmelk. Okay. They also have traditional spiritual and herbal healers um, who uses herbs, roots, and other materials to cure diseases. They also have diviners or witch doctors, uh, and they throw uh, bones to predict the future. Um, they also have a rainmaker. The rainmaker usually catches a hammerhead bird um, to bring rain. So, hulle uh, geloof dan ook in hulle spirituele, weer traditionele spirituele en kraaie dokters, wat dan 
Je hebt alles dan gespecialiseerd, of alle ken dan die type um, kruien en wortels en andere materialen om dan um, ziektes te, te genees. Hulle het dan ook, um, ek weet, uh, soos een uh, toerdokter waarvan hulle gebruik maak, waar een gewoonlik bone, uh, bene gooi om die um, toekomst te voorspel. En dan het hulle ook um, iemand wat hulle noem, soos een uh, uh, reenmaker. Um, hierdie persoon vang dan gewoonlik soos een um, is een specifieke type voel en dan glo hulle dat, dat dit dan vir hulle reen sal bring. Ok, the traditional healers are also involved in the initiation of young boys um, for the boys to become men and it's usually a, sac a sacred uh, initiation which prepare the boys then for, for manhood. So, um, hierdie traditionele um, dokters is dan ook um, Weet hulle, hulle is ook dan deel van die initiëring van jong seens, om hulle dan van seens na maans te maak. Het is gewoonlik a, 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 a aparte initiation of a aparte a, a functie wat gebeur en dan word hierdie word dan gebruik om van maans na man, man uit toe te, toe te vaat. Goed. Um, the cattle is also important for them and their lifestyle. Um, it also shows wealth and is also useful for Ebola. Um, handmade pipes are very, um, uh, they are very uh, unique and are very specific to the Kosa culture. And it's a privilege for women um, who have a certain amount of children to have these handmade, handmade pipes. So, um, beeste is ook vir hulle belangrijk, uh, as deel van hulle leefstijl, dit wees ook rijkdom en word ook gebruik as labola. Dan het hulle baie specifieke handgemaakte pijpen wat hulle rook en dit is dan ook uh, voorrecht vir vrouwen wat een sekere uh, hoeveelheid kinders het om dan van die pijpen gebruik te maak. En tabakko uh, is dan ook een traditionele geskenk in, in hierdie kultuur. Uh, the men and their women um, usually uh, cover their heads when in public they wear beadwork um, as pendants to show their age and status and women also paint their faces in red and yellow as decoration. Um, so as I said men will also wear um, beads uh, for important celebration and also um, cover their heads in public. So the vrouwen in die mans um, weet beskerm of dra een doek um, oor hulle koppe en hulle het dan, gebruik dan uh, kralewerk as een hangerkie om hulle ouderdom en status aan te dui. Die vrouwen verf ook hulle gezichten in rooi en geel as, um, as dekor en die vrou ach die mans as kies um, dra ook krale uh, by belangrike vieringe wat hulle vier. So just to show you a few pictures, there you can see the causes with the unique handmade um, pipes. Also just a picture of the type of food that they would eat and just a picture of how their huts would look like. So you, you can see it's a round hut with a um, grass thatched um, or thatched roof then on top. Okay, um, then we get to the Swatis. They are mainly found in Mampumalanga and Iswatini, which was previously known as Swaziland. Swaziland, so die Swati groep, hulle word hoofdzakelijk in Mapumalanga en Iswatini gevind. Um, Iswatini is, uh, die, was voorheen bekend as Swaziland. Uh, women and young girls, uh, also traditional responsible for cooking in the special huts, which are um, dit lala. Uh, their staple diet is the maize flour with pumpkins, spinach, beans, uh, marula and other wild flowers, maize porridge and corn and roasted peanuts. And the traditional beer um, and sour milk is um, the, uh, their favorite drinks that they drink. So the young vrouwen and the meisjes wat er, was traditioneel ook verantwoordelijk vir die, of is traditioneel ook verantwoordelijk vir die kook van die gezin, in speciale lit, uh, hutte wat hulle lit lala noem. Uh, hulle het ook een speciale dieet um, wat dan van milimeel is, um, sal met pampoen eet hulle dit gewoonlik, spinazie, boone, uh, marula en ander wild, wilde vruchte eet hulle ook gereeld, uh, hulle eet ook milipap en um, weet, weet, milies en geroosterde um, nete uh, en dan drink hulle ook uh, traditionele bier en siermelk, uh, is van hulle ginsling drankies wat hulle dan drink. Ok, um, there you would see once again this italic word, um, this means, uh, or this is a traditional dance performed by unmarried girls and then this specific dance that you can see over here is, is a live dance performed by a group of men. 
So hier is die twee verschillende danse wat, wat um, traditioneel bij die swatis voorkom. So die eerste wat jy kan zien is traditioneel wat hier um, on, ongetrouwde um, uh, meisies uh, gedans word en dan is daar ook uh, dans wat dier mans, uh, uh, het de groep mans um, gedans word. Hulle is dan ook baie bekend vir hulle um, snor instrumente en riet instrumente. Riet instrumente word dan ook bespeel dier die seens wat na die um, beeste in die veld kyk. So they are very um, recognizable or they are, are usually um, familiar or um, familiarize them with string instruments and reed instruments. And the reed instruments are usually played by boys looking after, uh, after their cattle. And the cattle also plays an important role in their traditional life. Uh, their dress or um, the clothing that they wear is colorful sarongs, which is cotton um, cloth, which is round around, uh, wrapped around their body, which is red, black, and white. Okay, so um, my friend of the Afrikaans leaders ook net sê, so die um, beeste speel dan ook een belangrike rol in hulle traditionele leven. En die type klere drag wat hulle draai is amper soos een sarong, um, wat van katoen lap gemaakt is, en hulle draai dit dan om hulle lijven wat dan gewoonlik rooi, zwart en wit is. So um, as you can see in this picture, it's a typical um, picture of the sarong um, with, with a um, distinctive black, uh, red and white colors their type of food that they eat. And then as you can see, yeah, the string instruments that they um, are famous for when playing music. Okay. Then the last uh, grouping in the Nungi group is the Ndebeles. So the last group here in the Nungi group is in Ndebeles. Um, they are mainly found in Mapumulanga, Limpopo and Zimbabwe. They are known for their geometric and colorful decor. Uh, beautiful the um, decorated homesteads with thatch roofs and they also um, usually have a courtyard with a um, surrounding lower wall. So in the Beles kom gewoonlik uh, of um, hulle kom hoofsaaklik in Mapumulanga, Limp um, Limpopo in Zimbabwe voor. Hulle, hulle is baie bekend vir hulle kleurvolle decor wat hulle um, gebruik in hulle, ek weet op hulle huise of in hulle decor of enige iets wat hulle doen. Um, en dan hulle huise word dan, het dan ook grasdakke op en dan het hulle gewoonlik soos een uh, binnenhof met een laag um, la muurkie. So dit, dit is gewoonlik hoe hulle huise dan lyk. Their main dishes is uh, the maize flour porridge together with vegetables and meats. Newly wet women usually wear a blanket around their shoulders, shoulders and brass rings around their necks, legs and arms. I will show you a picture in the next slide of how that looks like. Um, so hulle bekende disse is dan hulle mealy meal pap, um, saam met groente en um, vlees. En dan pasgetrouwde vrouwens draag gewoonlik soos ek om baars oor hulle skouwers. En dan het hulle ook um, hierdie um, ringe wat hulle om hulle nekke en hulle arms en, en bene draag. Um, in die volgende printje sal julle een mooi voorbeeld sien van hoe dit lyk. Uh, the men uh, wear a type of apron. Um, you will also see in the next picture how that looks like. It's usually a loop around the necks made from the skin of a, of a genet. Um, the society, they believe that um, the men can have more than one woman. They also have traditional healers and they look after their spiritual and physical well-being of their patients. Okay, so die mans um, draas soos een uh, type voorskoot, julle sal sê in die volgende printje hoe dit lyk, en het gaan om die nek en dan word het um, gemaakt van die vel van een maskiaat kat. En dan hulle glo in hulle um, society of in hulle gemeenskap dat um, mans kan meer um, as een vrou he. Hulle gebruik ook traditionele um, geneesheers en hulle kyk gewoonlik na hulle spirituele en fysische uh, weet, welstand van, van hulle patiënten. Okay, so just a few photos of the Ndebelis. There you can see the distinctive brass rings around the neck. And you can see, yeah, she's also wearing a blanket around her shoulders, which indicate that she is a newly wet bride, newly wet bride. Uh, also their type of food that they eat. And then you can see, yeah, the type of apron um, that was discussed that the men's, men wear. And you can see, yeah, at the back, um, that is how they decorate their homes. So it's very colorful and it, it's a very nice, um, you know, uh, a frame of work that they use in. So they are a very colorful um, group of people.
Okay, so the next grouping that we're going to look at is the Sutu group. Uh, and they consist of the northern Sutus, the Tswanas, and the so southern Sutus. So the volgende groepering of group na waarna ons kyk is the noordelike um, Sutus, the Tswanas, and the suidelike Sutus. Okay, um, so as I said, the northern Sutus, or the Bapedi, ba the Tswanas, or the Batswana, um, the southern Sutu, or the Basutus. Okay. So, uh, so if we look at the northern Sutus, they are mainly found in the Limpopo province. Um, they live in clay huts, which are mixed with cattle dung and then thatched roofs. And the chiefs wear uh, le uh, leopard or lion skins to indicate their leadership. So the noordelike Sutus or the of the Bapedis, hulle kom gewoonlik um, in Limpopo voor. Um, hulle het klei hutte, wat um, gemeng is met um, queen mis, en dan het hulle ook grasdak um, Grasdakke. Hulle hoof manne draag gewoonlik a luipaard en liuwvelle om hulle leierskap um, aan te dui. The Tswanas are mainly found in the northwest and Botswana areas. They stay in the big cities and go back to their hometowns for, for holidays. And they usually grow sweet potatoes and corn and they have goats and cattle. Okay, so the Tswanas or the Botswanas het, um, kom hoofsakelijk voor in die Noordwest of Botswana um, omgewe. Hulle, ga, hulle kom gewone terug van die groot stede af um, as hulle vakanties het, om dan weer terug te kom na hulle um, huise toe. En hulle verbouw dan ook um, soet patats en dan koring en dan het hulle ook um, skape en beeste. The Southern Sutus or the Basutus are mainly found in the Free State and the Kingdom of the Sutu. They live in flat roof huts and they are tastefully and colorfully decorated by the women. And then all of them um, usually eat um, porridge which are made of sorghum, roasted corn flour flavored with salt and sugar. So the, um, the Soilica Sutus or the Basutus, are looking with salt like in the Freistaat voor or in the um, Rijkdom van die van den Sutu. Hulle het gewoon een plat dak hitte en um, hierdie huise van hulle word dan gewoonlik mooi um, versier dier die vrouwe in die groep. En amal van hulle eet pap wat van sorghum gemaakt is of geroosterde um, millimeel wat dan ge, gegeer is met sout en suiker. So just a few photos to indicate how the um, Sutu group looks like. Here you can see um, also the flat, um, flat roofed um, huts, clay huts that they stay in. The next grouping are the Shangan Songa group. They are mainly found in Limpopo, uh, which, uh, and then also uh, the borders of the Kruger National Park and Southern Mozambique. They have very intricate weaving and basketry, as well as poetry and wood carvings that they do. The women usually uh, weave these baskets to store their grains, and the men carve the wooden spoons, bowls, and other household utensils. utensils. So the Tsangan Tsonga group come with sorghum and limpopo food, and um, work the other of from the upper grains from the Kruger National Park, and then work the southern part of Mozambique. Um, die vrouwens doen dan baie um, eet spesifieke weewerk, weewerk van hulle um, van, die, van die baskets, weet van die uh, mindjies wat hulle het en hulle um, is dan ook bekend vir hulle pottebakkerij en dan ook vir hulle um, houtsneewerk wat hulle doen. Die vrouwens doen gewoonlik die, die, die wee van die mindjies um, om hulle grane te stoor en die mans is gewoonlik verantwoordelik om die lepels uit te kerf, die bakke te maak en um, enig ander huishoudelike um, item wat hulle kan gebruik, hulle is gewoon verantwoordelik om dit te doen vir die groep. Um, they usually decorate their bodies with tattoos and beads, uh, bracelets and heavy, um, heavy brass um, rings that they also wear. Traditional, they also make use of lobola, which is used as payment for the bride's family of the prospective groom. Their traditional dishes um, are shishebo, which is made from monkey nuts and vegetables, to, uh, tomatoes and pepper. So, hulle, um, hulle versier gewoonlik um, op hulle um, velle of op hulle luive tattoos. Hulle dra ook kralewerk um, as armbande en dan dra hulle ook die, die ringe um, wat van um, koper gemaakt is. Hulle het ook die traditie van Lebola, waar um, die voornemende bruide gom dan na die bruidse familie te kom, om dan um, dit sekere hoeveelheid beeste dan vir die voornemende bruidse familie te gee, 
kom dan pet, om te pedan te petol fer dies fer sy voornemende bruid. Alle traditionele desse is shishebo, wat dan gemaakt word van, um, van aapmete en dan ook groente, um, tomaties en um, um, so sutrasies wat hulle dan gebruik. Just a few pictures to indicate how the Tsonga and Tonga group looks like. You can see there their beautiful beadwork that they use and then also the pottery work that they, um, that they make. Okay, before we go on to the vendor group, can I just quickly see um, if everybody is still following, if I can just quickly see a few hands um, just to, to see that everybody is still on track and that you are with me. Okay, great stuff. I see a few hands over there. Uh, then we're going to carry on with the vendor group. So the vendor group are usually found in the northern parts of Limpopo. Languages that they speak, in, um, languages mainly spoken is Chivenda. Um, they are also part of the royal family and have many ancient traditions related to royalty. The women are very much respected in the Venda culture and they can become queens and chiefs. So the Venda group comes with Sokrak in the Nurlika Dela van Limpopo for. Die, die tol wat hulle hoofsakelijk praat is Chavenda. Hulle is dan ook deel van, um, weet van die, van die, van die uh, koninklijke familie. En hulle het dan ook baie uh, geskietkindige of oud tradities wat dan ook, uh, weet, wat jy ook kan, uh, kan link of wat, wat dan ook um, weet, gepaard gaan met die koninklijke tradities. Die vrouwens word op haar gerespecteer in die Wenda groep en hulle kan koning hinge of selfs um, hoof vrouwe dan in die geval word. Koro, koro is, uh, is, is something that takes place every Sunday. It's a, a form of tribal council where chiefs and elders come together to discuss um, issues related to their community. Their traditional dishes um, are ground nuts and mealy corns and beans and they traditionally cook on open fires. Music, music plays a very important role in their cultures. Uh, dr drums plays a prominent role. And uh, music is also um, used for celebration, for work, for happiness, sadness, and um, other occasions in their life. Sorry. Um, so just for the Afrikaans learners, um, so koro, koro is iets wat gewoonlik op een zondag plaasvind. So dit is een um, baie speciale um, vergadering, of dit, dit neem die vorm van een vergadering in waar hoofmanne en dan um, weer die, weer die ouwe persoene in die, in die groepering dan um, sekere kwesties hanteer wat in die gemeenskap gebeur. Um, hulle disse wat hulle eet is dan um, ook soos grond, grondboone en dan um, milies en boone en hulle koop dan um, traditioneel op oop vieren. Muziek is ook vir hulle baie belangrik, hulle speel um, hoofsakelijk dromme en muziek maak een groot deel uit van hulle um, vieringe, of het nou verwerk is, of, of hulle gelukkig is, of hartseer is, so hulle vier die vieringe in hulle leven en um, muziek maak een groot deel daarvan uit. Just a few pictures to, to show you um, the vendor grouping and as you can see here, yeah, drums plays a very um, prominent role in their lifestyles. So the next group is the Khoisan or the Nama group. They are mainly found in the Northern Cape and Namibia and they are descendants um, of the original inhabitants of South Africa. They are used to very harsh and very dry environment where they live in, especially if you, um, because they live in the Northern Cape and Namibia, it's a very dry area or environment that they are used to. Uh, tradition of singing and dancing. Um, the best known dance that they are familiar with for is for their stop dance. They are nomadic people, which means they travel from place to place with their livestock. So the Khoisan and the Nama group come with Sokrak in the North Cap in Namibia for. Hulle is dan ook afstammelinge van die um, oorspronkelike groep um, wat in Zuid-Afrika voorkom. En hulle is gewoond aan baie, jy weet, harde en, en, en droe omgeving waarin hulle leer. Hulle is ook traditioneel baie bekend vir hulle sing en dans. En die, um, die, weet, die dans waarvoor hulle die meeste bekend staan um, is die stapdans, soos jy kan sien. Um, hulle is dan ook um, nomadiese mense, wat beteken dat hulle baie rondreis, weet, van plek tot plek en dan vat hulle hulle skape en beeste saam, waar ook al um, hulle dan nou trek. 
uh, traditional Noma hut is called uh, Mikey's house, which consists of wooden frame and then covered with a woven reed mats, uh, which can easily be packed up because of their nomadic lifestyle. Afrikaans is spoken by the Khoisan and Nama. Some traditional people speak the old click sounding Nama language still. And then poems and storytelling in Afrikaans and Nama play an important role in their culture. So the traditional hutte where the Nama is gebruikt word and Mikey's huise genoem, wat dan um, gemaakt word van a hout raam, wat dan um, weet oorgetrek word met gewefte um, riet, um, Matte wat hulle dan oorset, hulle praat dan gewoonlik Afrikaans, um, uh, wat dan weer die Khoisan en die Nama gepraat word, um, en dan sommige van die traditionele, die, die, die rarige traditionele mense, gebruik nog die oude kliek um, geluid van die Nama taal. Hulle is dan ook baie bekend vir hulle gedichte en stories wat hulle vertel in Afrikaans, en dit speel ook een baie groot rol in hulle kultuur. So just a few pictures also to show then the, the Khoisan and Nama group. Okay, then we're going to look at the white Indian and colored group. So um, then now we're going to look at the, the white Indian and the clearling group. Um, so if you look at the, the white people, there are a large number of white people in South Africa, which um, consists of the Greeks, the German, the French, the Portuguese, Italians, uh, German and English people who immigrated to South Africa. Uh, most of uh, South Africa, um, South Af uh, most of these South Africans come from missionaries and settlers who came to South Africa in search of a better life and new land. Um, they are mainly um, associated with the Christian faith. And then some tr traditions still exist, but have become integrated with the South African traditions, for example, braai or braai flays. Most of the cultures today um, you or make use of braai flays as part of their culture. The women are seen as equal in their home and, and workplace. So, as we look at the white people, there is a great um, diversity mense dan in South Africa, where the Greeks, the Dutch, the French, the Portuguese, the Italian, Duitsers en dan ook die Engelse insluit, waar dan geëmigreerd het na Zuid-Afrika toe. Meeste van hulle was um, as gevolg van um, settlers wat gekom het, um, of, of um, de, de die missionaries waar dan oorgekom het na Zuid-Afrika toe, um, op, op soek na een nieuwe lewe, op een beter lewe in een nieuwe land. Hulle word dan ook hoofdzakelijk geassocieerd met die christel, um, christen, christelijke um, geloof. En dan het hulle ook... Uh, tradities wat nog steeds bestaan, maar van hierdie tradities is al so ingeweef in ons kultuur, soos bijvoorbeeld braaivleis, wat meeste van ons kultuur vandag um, hou doen of vier, en dan uh, word vrouwe word gesien as gelijke in die huis en die werkplek. If we look at the Afrikaner people, Afrikaans are, are their home language and is spoken in Namibia and South Africa, and it developed from the Dutch uh, by the first settlers in the Netherlands. Um, they are also quite conservative. Um, they see the man as the head of the household and women who take care of the household and the children. But this has changed um, slightly or this has changed over the years as the role of the women um, uh, become, come into play in the workplace as well. Uh, dishes um, that are familiar with Afrikaner people are cook sisters, which are a braided dough, which is dipped in syrup. Maltaart, I think most of you of Maltaart or um, are familiar with Maltaart. It's a, a cinnamon flavored milk tart. Um, they also do stews, braai flays, which are served with potatoes, sweet potatoes, and vegetables. And then the type of music that they play is uh, burumesik, uh, which are traditionally played with a guitar, a monflaiki, and drums. And it's also got a lot of rhythm and is played at sockies. Okay, so the Afrikaans means uh, of the Afrikaner mense praat Afrikaans as hulle huistal en dit word hoofsaaklik in Namibia en Suid-Afrika gepraat. En dit het ontstaan van die, um, weet, van, die, van, die Nederlands, uh, van die Nederlandse mense wat dan hier as eerste settlers aangekom het in Suid-Afrika. Hulle is redelijk conservatief met die dat die man die huis, uh, weer die hoofd van die huishouding is en dan um, die vrouwens waar dan kyk na die huishouding en die kinders. Maar dit het al oor, um, oor die jare verander, dat, um, omdat die vrouw dan ook een baie uh, prominente rol speel in die werkplek. Die disse wat hulle um, voor bekend staan is dan koeksisters, waar dan geplachte deeg is wat hulle dan in stroop um, druk of dip. 
En dan, ek sê graf van meeste van julle het al melkterf geëet, wat uh, um, cinnamon, wat uh, um, cinnamon flavored milk taart is, so dit is uh, kaneel, ge, gegeerde melkterf wat hulle dan maak. Hulle is dan ook gewoond, of hulle maak dan ook breedies, uh, uh, braaifleis, wat hulle gewoonlik bedien saam met aardappel, soetpatats en groente. En dan boeremusiek is baie traditioneel um, by die Afrikaner mense uh, en dan word dan gewoonlik gespeel met uh, gitaar en een mondvlijk en dromme, wat nogal redelijk ritme het en hierdie word dan gewoonlik gespeel by sokkies, wat een type dans is um, waar, waarby mense hierdie muziek gebruik. So I just a few pictures, so there you can see the traditional um, boeremusiek, the cook sisters and um, yeah, just a photo of the um, white and Afrikaner people. The next group is the Indian group. Um, they are mainly found in Guazulu Natal, where the first Indians arrived as workers to work um, on the sugarcane fields. They are also very, um, uh, very colorful and lively and have distinctive music, dress and dance. And many Indian communities take great pride in celebrating their culture. Uh, the Hindu faith um, are usually also linked with this um, group uh, and they follow their religious um, rituals with much devotion. Uh, and one of these festivals that they, um, that they celebrate is Diwali, which is the Fest of Light. It's the light over darkness um, and it's celebrated with many lamps, candles and fireworks. So the Indian um, gemeenskap kom hoofdzakelijk in Guzulu Natal voor, um, waar die eerste Indiërs um, as werkers gearriveerd het in Guzulu Natal om op die um, suikerrietvelde te werk. Hulle is dan ook baie kleurvol en hulle het, um, jy weet, hulle het specifieke muziek en, en, en dans en vleere draag wat baie bekend is vir, vir hierdie groepering. En um, Hulle, thai, hulle vat ook um, baie trots in, in hulle viering van hulle kultuur. Hulle word dan ook geassocieerd met die hindoe geloof en hulle volg hierdie nogal met, met groot uivering en hulle doen rarig um, hierdie rituele volg hulle rarig um, volgens, volgens die boek. En een van die feeste waaraan gevier word is de Wali, waar die feest van licht is. Dit is met ander woorde die licht oor donkerte en dit word gevier met um, baie olielampe, kerse en vierwerke. Uh, Muslim faith is also linked to this group, um, which is also um, the religious are, um, are, are followed with, with very much devotion. And one of their uh, festivals, the Eid Rufert, um, I hope I pronounced it correctly, uh, is celebrated at the end of the fasting period of the Ramadan. Then the popular dishes are, are hot curries, which is lamb, chicken and seafood. They're also familiar with the biryani, which is a rice dish. Um, and then also the roti, which is flatbread. So the Muslim geloof wordt ook gekoppel aan hierdie groepering. Hulle het ook um, feeste wat hulle vier, en hulle vier gewoonlik, um, weet, weet die viering wat hulle dan vier um, om die einde van Ramadan aan te wees. En dan die disse waar hulle, uh, waar, waar vir hulle bekend staan, is hulle, um, weet hulle hot curries, weet hulle warm, um, warm curry gerechte, um, waarin gewoonlik gemaakt word van skaap, um, of hoener, of seekos, en dan briani, um, Ek sê keer al van, van jylle het al hierdie briani geëet en dan roti wat dan um, soos, weet, a, a, a type platbrood of flatbrood is soos dat hulle daarvan praat. En dan soos reeds genoem, um, hulle kleren draag is baie kleervol. Uh, hulle draag een sari of die vrouwens draag gewoonlik een sari wat een lang mooi um, weet, ge, um, weet dekker uit het, weet het is met uh, mooi fijn kunstwerk dan ook versier wat hulle dan om hulle lijve draai. So the women usually wears a sari um, and it's a very beautiful long decorated um, type um, cloth that they wear and wrap around their body. A traditional uh, Muslim women wear long black garments and sometimes only hands and eyes can be seen. So just a few photos of the Indian, um, Indian community of Indian people. As you can see, they're very vibrant, very lively colors. And yeah, on the right, you can see the curries, the flat and the flat braids that are traditional to their um, culture. Okay, then the last grouping for this group is the colored people. Um, so the last grouping in this group is the clearlinge, and they come meestal voor in the Westkop or in the provincies. So they are mainly found in the Western and Northern Cape. So they are also a very diverse um, community. 
um, en hulle um, kom dan uit verskeidenheid groepering waar die Malaysiese slawe insluit, die, wet, die wit settlers, die Khoisan en, die, en um, swart mense. So they are a very diverse community and they are um, desigans from a vibrant mix of Malayan slaves, white settlers, Khoisan and black people. Other cultural uh, colored communities are spread across the country. There are also rich in traditions of music and dance. Um, I'm sure um, you, um, some of you have already seen the Cape Ministerial um, Carnival, which is um, held annually in the Cape, um, usually on the second day um, of the new year. They are very familiar for their Malayan cuisine, such as bubuti, which is a mince and egg um, custard, Malaysian curries and fish dishes and they um, speak, speak predominantly Afrikaans. So, hierdie gemeenskap is nou ook verspreid oor ons land. Hulle het ook een baie rijk traditie as het kom by muziek en dans. En ek sê graag van, van, julle het al gesien die die, die, um, die, die, kop, die Cape Ministerial Carnival, wat dan gewoonlik op die tweede of tweede nieuwe jaarsdag gevier word in die kaap. Hulle het ook gewoonlik mooi kleurvolle kleren aan en hulle dans ook dan, um, of hulle het hulle Carnaval wat hulle dan hou. Um, die disse wat vir hulle bekend staan is die Malaysiese cuisine, um, wat bebootie is. Ek sê graag van meeste van julle het al bebootie geëet, wat dan een mens en um, eier um, kasterd um, type van geraag is. Dan ook hulle Malaysiese karries en vistisse en dan spraat hulle hoofdzakelijk Afrikaans in hulle groepering. So you can see here the photo on the left of the Cape Ministerial Carnival, very colourful, the umbrellas and the colorful um, dresses that they wear or um, clothing that they wear. And you can see yeah, the Malaysian um, food that are traditional to the colored people. Okay, so why why this unique culture? Why do we have to have, why do we have to know about the cultures in South Africa? It's a very unique aspect for us and um, per province, we can use our cultural groups to to show or to, to indicate to tourists what we have in store in South Africa. So South Africa is very unique in terms of culture and per provincie can we see culture ook uitbeeld in our land. So if we look at Limpopo, we have the Mabambungwe um, cultural landscape. In Mapumalanga, we have a pilgrim's rest, uh, Free State, the Basutu cultural village, in Gauteng, the Food Tracker Monument, um, Guazulu Natal are very popular or very famous for their rickshaws, and the Northwest are very popular um, for the cradle of humankind. Please note um, that these are only some examples, and they are really um, they are very uh, or very much other examples that can also be used in the different provinces. If we look at the Eastern Cape, um, we can see the Kosa Homestead there. Uh, in Western Cape, we can see the District 6 Museum, and then the Northern Cape are very familiar or very um, known for their mine culture and history. Okay, so how do we promote this culture to our international and local tourism? Uh, how can we use our cultural uniqueness and diversity? So there are a few ways that we do this. So uh, who can own um, Yuri? ons kulturele uniekheid en diversiteit aan ons internationale en selfs plaaslike toerisme bemerk. So daar is een paar aspekte of een paar maniere hoe ons het in ons land doen. So, so the first one in the, is the short left um, promotion uh, or um, uh, project that we have. I'm sure um, all of you have um, come, to, uh, come to meet with this project in your grade 10 years. So ek sê graf van amal van julle het al van die short left gehoor in julle grade 10 jaar. And this is to promote local tourism in South Africa, uh, and it provides a variety of getaways and holidays um, with, uh, with a cultural taste. So that's it, that is just the logo of the short left um, promotion um, that we use in South Africa. Then we also have a variety of cultural villages, and these villages usually are a very much a selling point for our international and, and even our local tourists, and it attracts them to see and um, so that we can experience how other cultures also live in our country. So here are just a few examples. You will see here the Lesedi um, village, uh, cultural village, the first photo that you can see over here. The second one is the Shanga cultural village, and the last one is Shaka land. So, um, so as you can see, there are a lot of cultural 
weet, baie kulturele villages waar die mense kan besoek, so dit is nie net vir internationale toeriste nie, maar selfs vir ons plaaslike toerisme, so dat ons bykie by mekaar kan leer en kan sien hoe ander kultuur ook leef en hulle kultuur uitdruk in ons land. So, um, die eerste prentje wat julle daar sien is die Lissedi um, village, um, wat, wat wat mense kan gaan besoek. Die tweede ene is die Shangana cultural, uh, culturele um, village wat jy kan gaan besoek. En die laatste ene is dan Shaka Land. En dit is dan hoofdzakelijk in KwaZulu-Natal. Ok, so we've covered a lot of theory um, um, today uh, with regards to our cultural diversity and uniqueness. How will this be um, tested in a test or examination? So you can see over here the typical type of questions that you um, can expect on this topic is um, they can ask you something like study the photos below and identify the culture depicted. Then you have to be able to depict um, or identify each culture depicted in the pictures below. They can ask you it in a short question. Um, I'm just going to read the first question over here. So complete the sentence by choosing the correct uh, word or phrase in brackets. Only write the word or phrase next to the question number. Then they can ask you something like, for instance, um, is the Gambu dance or the reed dance, um, has this originated as a result of mines in the Johannesburg area? Then you had to have to, to, to choose um, either one of the two options. Or they can ask you something like, explain how South Africa's cultural uniqueness and diversity promote local and international tourism. Or they can give you a scenario. And then um, it can be, for example, a newspaper extract that they use. And then they can ask you various questions about this, about a specific culture um, with regards to, to um, the extract or with regards to uh, um, uh, extract that they use in the, in the paper. So, graad als ons het nou baie theorie um, wat ons doorgegaan het oor ons kulturele uniekheid en um, die frases wat jy hier kan sien is tip, uh, typies hoe hulle dit vir julle kan praat in die toets op die examen. So, wat hulle kan doen is hulle kan vir julle kolom gee met um, prentjies van verskillende kulture en dan kan hulle vir julle vraag met uit te ken. Dan moet julle, bevoor, dan moet julle hulle kan uit ken, soos bijvoorbeeld in 1.2 as julle na die specifieke pijpe kyk, daar is al klaar vir julle een leidraad om te sê wat sy type groepering dit is. Of hierdie... Um, mooi gekleerde huise, is al klaar een aanduiding van wat die kulturele groep dit is. Dan kan hulle bijvoorbeeld ook veel vraag um, om dan te kies um, die rechte term in hakies, om te sê, weet om dan die sin te voltooi, so as jy na die eerste ene kyk, die, um, die, die stevel um, dans of die um, riet dans, um, wat die een van die twee het ontstaan as gevolg van die mijnweze in die um, Johannesburg area, dan moet jy een van die twee kies. Of hulle kan vir jou vraag hoe die Zuid-Afrikaanse kulturele uniekheid en diversiteit um, gebruik kan word om um, plaaslike en internationale toeriste te lok. Of hulle kan vir julle scenario gee um, uh, of uit een niesberigheid of van um, bijvoorbeeld Marula Media af en dan kan hulle vir julle klomp vraag vraag oor die specifieke kultuur. So jy is maar net een paar voorbeelde van die type vraag wat julle van hierdie eenheid of van hierdie gedeelte van die waar kan verwaag. Okay, grade 11s, that is the end of my presentation for today on cultural diversity and uniqueness. Uh, please, um, if I can ask you, um, if you can just put your questions in the question box. If you have any other questions that you still want to ask us, we will definitely get back to you after um, this session. Um, I want to thank you for your understanding and um, for, with technical problems today, but I think uh, we, we can carry on from here. And then if you're not interested uh, or registered uh, with Impact, you can contact us at info at impact.co.za. So, Grot Elfs, uh, baie dankie vir die sessie vandag en dat julle bijgewoon het. Asjeblief, vraag enige ander vraag wat julle nog het in die um, vraag of die question box. As jy nie geregistreerd is by Impact nie, asjeblief, stuur vir ons, uh, en jy wil enige vraag vraag of enige inrichting hee, kan julle vir ons asjeblief uh, uh, e-post stuur aan info at impact.co.za. Goed, um, dan is dit al. Baie dankie vir julle tyd. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. And hopefully we will see you in um, the following sessions. Thank you. Um, keep safe and keep well. Bye-bye.